thank you for joining us today. I'm Michelle Marks, Chancellor of the University of Colorado Denver. I'm so honored to welcome you to the second installment of this video series. There's so many incredible things happening in Colorado and our nation and the world. And at CU Denver, we are always asking the big questions and we are seeking big, bold solutions. But it does take strong connections with people, with organizations, and with our city to make a real impact. And I am so honored today to sit down with Denver Mayor Michael B. Hancock. Mayor Hancock is finishing up his third and final term as Denver's 45th mayor. Raised in Denver since he was 10 months old, he began his career at the Denver Housing Authority and the National Civic League. After that first foray into city leadership, Mayor Hancock has stewarded the city and county of Denver for the past 12 years. During this time, he helped enable Denver's recovery from the recession, he expanded the Denver International Airport, and he led us through the COVID-19 pandemic. Mayor Hancock is a model leader and community advocate, and we at CU Denver are also so proud because he is an alumni. He received his Master of Public Administration from our university in 1995. And I am so grateful he could join me today for a conversation about leadership and public service in times of great opportunity and extreme challenge. Mayor Hancock, thank you so much for joining me. Glad to be with you, Chancellor. As you look back over the last 12 years, can you talk a little bit about the initiatives that you feel have been most successful at really influencing the quality of people's lives here in Denver? You know, when I allow myself to think about those things, it's 12 years is a long time. Yeah. It went by fast, but it's a long time. And we had a lot of initiatives and I, you know, I'm proud of the fact that we were able to pull the city out of the recession when we first came in and make it one of the most economically thriving cities in the nation. But I gotta tell you that when I think about that one initiative where I said that was like a pebble hitting the pond, but it created a ripple effect that I think will be felt by generations and for decades to come in Denver. I think it's when we made our uh, recreation centers and our swimming pools free to all of our children in Denver and are under a program called My Denver Card. Um, we came in and we learned that our teen pregnancy rates were high, our dropout rates were high, our truancy rates were high, but yeah, we were charging $30 a year for kids to be members of a network of recreation centers. And most of the kids just simply didn't go in them. Um, we created a barrier that didn't make much sense. Uh, and so when we removed that barrier, we saw every one of those metrics begin to drop and the quality of life for our young people started to improve. So I think that's the one I'm most proud of. Oh, that's really wonderful. Yeah. Challenges, let's talk a little bit about challenges. Yeah. You've certainly seen your share of challenges. Mm -hmm. As you look back, what have been some of the most com complex challenges and how did you work through them? Well, without question, you know, the recession was a big one that came in. We had a $100 million deficit that had to be closed literally in about 90 days. Um, that was a, a huge challenge. Um, we had a police department that was in a lot of challenges uh, with regards to excessive force cases without really any strategy to address how do we don't come back this way again with excessive force cases. Um, we had really no vision for the city with regards to business and our global presence. Um, but I gotta tell you, the most complex public policy decision I've ever uh, been a part of trying to address, homelessness. People experiencing homelessness. For every person who is homeless in our city, and we are counting now over 5,000, our approach must be tailored to that individual. And so there isn't just put shelter, uh, get shelter for everyone. It's not just get everybody a job. There's so many mitigating or impactful uh, uh, issues for every person that is experiencing homelessness that we have to be very methodical, very systemic, and be patient with our approach. So it's without question the most complex challenge we've faced. CU Denver is having a big birthday. Happy birthday. We are 50 years <laughs> old, 50 yes. years young this year, young, please, yes. um, and you are an important part of that history. You yourself graduated uh, from CU Denver. Can you talk a little bit about your experience at CU Denver and how it has impacted your life and work trajectory? Yeah, you know, this coming May will be 28 years that I graduated from CU Denver as a, uh, in a Master's of uh, Public Administration. And it was a phenomenal uh, experience that I had on that campus. So I can imagine what it's been like over the last 20, uh, additional 23 years, or excuse me, 22 years for the system. Listen, every great city 
is, has a, a, a urban higher education institution in its city. Um, and, and not only do they just exist in their cities, but there's a partnership with that institution to help the city solve complex issues, help the city think about um, how it gets from point A to point B, to realize its vision, to become the, the, the education ground for its future employees. And, and, and we have been very fortunate to have UCD in our city, uh, at the heart of our city in downtown, to create, to produce an educated workforce, to help produce an educated um, employee base for the city of Denver and also to become a think tank and a partner with us on some of the most complex issues that we've had to face. So it has been a tremendous impact. Um, you know, you created the city center. You've, you've, you've leaned in on boards and commissions. Uh, you, you've helped us to bring in some great, very qualified, prepared students to work for the city of Denver for decades to come. We, you know, we, you are an economic uh, generator for us, quite frankly. And you're giving first generation students their first shot, I mean, at, at a higher education degree. Those things, you know, we can put dollars on, values on them, but at the end of the day, they're invaluable because they are creating the opportunity for this city and for generations to come that we'll never meet. That's a powerful, powerful tool. It is. It is a powerful partnership between Absolutely. a city and a university. And let's go one step further yeah. because I think a lot about the power of partnerships yes. in making a great city. And you just spoke to the power of, of mm -hmm. partnerships with colleges and universities. Um, but how do you think about partnerships with civic organizations mm -hmm. and employers and universities? I mean, it, we all need to be working together. Well, without question, you know, in every great city, they talk about anchor institutions. And, and uh, UCD is an anchor institution in Denver. You, have, you bring so many different elements, a lot of them that I just laid out for you to the city of Derry, to our quality of life, to the opportunities of generations to come, and, 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 and quite frankly, our workforce. When we go out and we're working with corporations who may want to relocate to Denver, maybe want to make investments, when we go around the world, we talk about direct uh, connections from our airport, it's our educational institutions that quite frankly become our, our, our asset that we can take and, 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 and share. You know, you want to be proud as a corporation to come here because you have a place that you'd be proud to send your kids to higher education, to be educated, to get opportunities. Your employees will have an opportunity to go for continuing education right here at the heart of the city in downtown Denver. Um, so those are, those are assets that we sell. We've had you all at the table with us as we try to convince Corporation X to come to Denver. Uh, we've taken leadership from UCD around the world with us when we try to talk about possible student exchanges or, or uh, you know, uh, foreign students coming to, to study abroad here in Denver because you're our asset. You're, you're really what we sell and that matters. So yeah, you're impactful and yeah, you matter. <laughs> Uh, one of the things since coming to Denver that I've noticed that yeah. feels different than other cities that I've lived in is that uh, employers work at the, the commitment mm -hmm. to making this city better, especially right. in challenging times. Everybody is at the table. That's you, right. You know, even in this office here right. where we are today, you have literally called all of us together That's right. to see what we can do to move this city forward. Right. Um, it's something very special about Denver. And that's, that collaborative leadership is why Denver is the city, yeah. the great city that it is. And yeah. it, it really does matter whether we are dealing with recession and what, thinking about our financial, um, you know, we had a financial imbalance or structural challenge when I came in. It was the civic leaders that came to the table to help Denver think through that. And, and quite frankly, some of the ideas we implemented and helped us come out of the, thrive out of the recession. The pandemic, yeah. right? You were part of a group of what, 300 civic folks who served on different committees that get us to think about not only how we deal with the pandemic, but what does it look like on the other side of this? Because we're going to emerge. We're not going to emerge the way we were uh, before we went in. And so how do we do it better, at, you know, emerge more uh, in a better position than when we went in? Um, and now as we deal with, you know, the possibility of the challenges around homelessness and, and, and the drug epidemic and migrants coming to Denver, civic individuals are stepping in and saying, we're here to help you think through this. And it's, it's helpful to make sure that we don't become victims of an echo chamber yeah. and that we make sure we're applying every possible innovation when we can to this challenge. So today's issue, just before we started this interview, you were talking right. to me about the migrant issue, yes. certainly homelessness, right. uh, public safety. These are not issues that Denver faces alone. Cities right. across the, the Western Hemisphere are facing, really Absolutely. around the world. And 
um, Denver, the city of Denver, was honored to be selected to host the first city summit of the yeah. Americas, yes. which will happen in, in yeah. April of mm -hmm. this year. Tell us a little bit about the importance of being selected to host um, such an important and first time ever event. Sure. And also, you've thought about a lot about what we can learn, what we can share with other cities, but also what we can learn from other cities. Absolutely. You know, first of all, there's a summit of the Americas where all the you know, heads of states yep. uh, of, of uh, the Western Hemisphere, Hemisphere countries come together and talk about common issues and how we get through it. The Secretary of uh, the State of the United States of America came up with the idea, what if we did the Summit of the, America, uh, of the Cities in America, uh, of the Americas? And so now the mayors around the Western Hemisphere are coming together uh, to talk about common issues. Now I attended the Summit of the Americas and they had a, a track where mayors got together. Mm -hmm. And we sat and talked and whether they were from Guatemala, El Salvador, Panama, um, I was amazed that when we sat down and started talking about common issues, we all have the same issues. You know, one mayor started talking about some things they were dealing with, and I'm sitting there going, you could give my state a city address. <laughs> it's the same issues yeah. that we're dealing with in Denver, Colorado. And so this is going to be an opportunity for us to come and talk about this. This is powerful. It's the first time in the history of the world mayors from the Western Hemisphere have come, and come together to talk about these issues, share ideas, to, to glean best practices from each other, and, and to hopefully take back home um, some of those ideas and implement them. So I'm excited about the convening that's going to be here. We're going to have hundreds of uh, thousands of mayors from around the Western Hemisphere here, and I think there are going to be some great ideas. You uh, have been a part of leadership groups that go to other cities for, I don't know, as long as you've been mayor or probably well before that. Right. Um, I've been on a couple with you where we go to other cities and study what other cities have done and brought with the idea of potentially bringing back ideas to make Denver even better. What are some ideas that, that you have brought, seen in other places and brought back to Denver yeah. and implemented here? Well, one is a partnership we have with you, and that's the city center. And, and it's interesting that, um, and you know, it was on these trips, before I was even mayor, I did it as a member of city council. I saw how, and I can't remember what city we were in, but they talked about the partnership with their urban institutions mm -hmm. and how utilizing them, leveraging them, create great cities. And, and it was, Studying that and looking at that is that really made me, when I became mayor, I, I convened the leadership of these mm -hmm. institutions on the Herrera campus and I said, we need you all. We, I, I, there are going to be a lot of issues coming. You have the intellectual capital on, that, on, that, on the, the campus and in these institutions that are anchored to the city of Denver. Your economic uh, generator, you have the students that we're going to need going forward. So we got a partner here. And so that was the first one of the big ideas that I walked away with from, from, that, uh, from that. The other one is, how do we not become a, you know, we begin to move away from a throwaway society, right? And I think it was in Salt Lake that I ran into an organization called Second Chance. And this is men, primarily men, but women in, as well, who had been convicted. And they were coming back in the community, but there was no system or services available to them. And Second Chance basically brought them in and said, you know, you're here, you got a home for the next two years. We're going to give you job training. We're going to have you operate businesses from this house. And they have a moving company. They have uh, uh, renovation companies. They have repair companies. And they are self-sufficient. And these men and women are able to reintegrate themselves with skills into society. But more importantly, Second Chance, um, you know, basically is self-sufficient because these companies they run. Now you think about this, you're moving. Last time you moved to Denver, you probably didn't use Second Chance, right? But just can you imagine that 10, let's say five or six formerly convicted felons show up at your house saying, we're gonna move your stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And, and we're gonna get to Well, they have the highest rated moving company in the state of Utah. They don't lose anybody's stuff and they get their stuff where it's supposed to be and, and everybody uses them. And so now we brought that model to Denver and it works. And now they have a moving company here. And so it, it was kind of things that, I mean, these trips can be very impactful and very informative. Absolutely. Yeah. Twelfth year as mayor, tell me what you know now that you didn't know in year one. Wow. Um, that God gave me two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> that I'm to listen more and, and to speak less. And so 
you know, as, as the, the good book teaches us, you know, we are to be uh, slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to listen. And, and that's what I have learned most in this office is that, you know, you surround yourself with good people for a reason. Let them help guide you and advise you um, because you have some monumental decisions that you have to make in this office. And if you're the smartest one, if I'm the smartest one in this room, we're in a lot of trouble. Leadership is critical. And I mean, a self-awareness is the most critical. What are my strengths? What are we, my weaknesses? I have 61 appointments that surround me. And so I try to find people who are very capable, but also complement my weaknesses. Um, because if I got to be honest with myself, that's not what I do. And I need good people to help me guide and, and, and get through whatever I have to do with that strength because it's not my area. Uh, and, and two, you got to be humble. This is, and, and humble, and I mean humble with a thick skin um, because there's only one of you and you're going to make mistakes and you got to be willing to allow yourself to make the mistakes, uh, but courageous enough to get up from those mistakes and say, uh, I am still the leader and I've got to move on. Um, and again, when you make mistakes, I think the most valuable lesson I've learned over my life and career is when you made a mistake, say, I made a mistake. Because what I know about every human being in this world who's ever lived in this, in this world, nobody is perfect. And I made a mistake. And everybody has. And I think people appreciate and respect when you can say, I did it. I'm picking myself up. And uh, we're going to try it again. Uh, let's talk about the importance of careers in public affairs. Yeah. You've devoted your life to leadership and service. Um, thoughts on the importance going forward? for choosing careers and roles? I think, you know, I think every career that you love and you have passion for is rewarding. Um, I look for what's the existential value to the public. Mm -hmm. um, at least for me, in public affairs, there's nothing more rewarding, particularly at the local level, because you get to see the impact more immediately. Um, you get to make decisions that matter to people every day. Uh, and then you get to watch it happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that to me is a powerful, powerful um, role to be a part of. You know, as mayor, I can walk out here and say, I want to shut down pa Bannock to create a plaza for residents where we can do concerts and bring people together. And in a matter of 45 days, the Bannock is closed and they painted a mural and they said, now we can put up stages and we can do things. That's a simple example of how we can impact you know, something very quickly. We want to make rec centers open and available to all of our children. We got 29 rec centers, only 700 kids are members in our city. Let's get rid of the membership fee and let's make every kid, the moment they register for school, a member of our rec program and our libraries. And now you got 100,000 kids with the eligibility to walk in our rec centers and do whatever they want. That's powerful. That is powerful. Yeah. At CU Denver, we say, we want to make education work for all. Right. And what I hear from you is the sense of this leadership and this commitment to make Denver work mm -hmm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple more quick questions for yeah. you. Um, there is a mayoral race happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give the next mayor of Denver? Wow. So two, two points. One is leadership doesn't require a title or an imitation. Um, lean in and be a leader. It's a great opportunity and you won't find a more powerful, honorable uh, role uh, than to be a mayor. Secondly, you are the chief executive of the city. This is a, almost a $4 billion operation. 11,000 uh, plus people work for you in this city, theoretically. Um, 711,000 people depend on you to work your tail off, and not to be perfect, but to do everything you can to do it right. And that is not to be lost. You cannot lose sight on why you're in this office. And so, uh, you know, I'm looking during the mayoral campaign at people who understand the power of the opportunity in this office global airport, right? A National Western Center that has global presence with water and food policy, urban campus, 
the downtown, the various unique, wonderful neighborhoods that we all go home to every night. Do you understand your ability to affect that and the opportunity it presents for you as well as for the entire city and to go home with that burden every day? Uh, who recognize that with humility that they're here to serve but not to be served. Very important. Very important. Very important. Yeah. Final question. Yeah. What's next for you? Find some sun and a good beach to just chill for a minute. <laughs> uh, but you know, I don't know, but here, I don't know what I'm going to do yet specifically. Um, but whatever I'm going to do, you know, I really do believe in, in, in not working, which means finding that job that I love and that I'll do every day with passion and not necessarily have to call it work. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, I've been blessed. I've never, as an adult and raising three kids and three kids through college, never had to worry, a day of worry about whether I was able to keep a roof over their heads or food on the table for them. Um, and I hope to continue that. Uh, so financially, I've always been blessed. You know, it's never been about being rich for me. Uh, I'm far from that. But it's been able to be to, to take care of my take care of my basic needs, but also to be willing to jump up every day and say I'm excited to go do this job. That to me is the most important thing. Well, thank you for taking care of all of us in this wonderful city over the last 12 years, and thank you for the time today. We're so grateful for you. Thank you for your partnership, and yes. I'm so glad you're the chancellor <laughs> of my alma mater. <laughs> I'm happy as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you.